Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Uh, let me at the very outset thank Gus Bilarakis for that wonderful introduction. Gus does, a, ha, does and has done a truly outstanding job as chairman of his subcommittee. He's one of those people on the committee you can rely on. Uh, when things get tough, sometimes not everyone is there. Gus is always there. And I want to thank him for that, for his loyalty, not just to me, which is almost inconsequential, but his loyalty to the Homeland Security Committee, to his country, and to the cause of national defense and homeland security. So, Gus, thank you for all that you do. Let me also thank uh, Frank Gaffney. Uh, last year, you may recall, I began a series of hearings into Muslim radicalization in the United States. Uh, I was attacked by many people. My wife said she didn't even know me after reading some of the attacks on me. Uh, New York Times, which couldn't find the time to write a word about Libya in the paper today, uh, focused four editorials and two front page stories on me for being a racist, a bigot. I could get down the whole list of things they said about me. But during that, but during that entire time, one person who was always there offering advice, support, and strength was Frank Gaffney. And I want to thank him for that. It's during, it's during tough times you find out who your friends are. And Frank was there and has always been there. Again, not just for me, but for all of us who care about our nation's future, whether it's serving with Ronald Reagan, whether doing the work he does today, or whether just being a beacon of hope for all of us and enabling us to learn the true nature of our enemy. That's Frank Gaffney. So I thank him for what he does and continues to do. It's also a special honor for me to be here tonight with John Kyle. Uh, when I first came to Congress 20 years ago, I had the privilege of serving with John for one year in the House before he moved on with an upward. I don't know, maybe he couldn't stand uh, being with me in the same chamber, I don't know. But in any event, he moved on to the Senate and obviously, as all of us know, has really been a tower of strength. Uh, if there's anyone who stands for integrity or anyone who stands for patriotism, anyone who takes his job as seriously as anyone possibly can, it's John Kyle. And I tell you, I don't, there's just no one who is able to fill his shoes, not just in the Senate, but in Washington and in the national security scene. John is there, he's always been there, and he speaks with such authority on so many issues essential to our national security, our defense, our homeland security, and having the guts to step forward. So, John, I want to thank you for all your years of service, and somehow you have to find a way to stay heavily involved, because we need you, we really do, more than ever. Thank you, John. It's also great to be here with Senator Ayotte and Senator Sessions. Now, my wife is not here tonight, but when I listen to Senator Sessions, now my wife is from Georgia, and after being married for over 40 years, we still have a hard time deciphering each other's accents. <laughs> so when I heard Jeff Sessions tonight, I figured, oh my God, I recognize that accent. There's no, but seriously, uh, both senators have, again, been true leaders, and I want to thank them for their service. Now, sitting at the table here tonight uh, is a person who also I have difficulty understanding at times, and he has yet to begin to understand me. That's uh, Louis Gomert of the state of Texas. A great, great advocate and a great guy. Thank you, Louis. Louis Gomert's another guy. When he's on your side, you have nothing to worry about. You know there's always somebody there watching your back. And again, he backs down to no one. Also, a little bit of uh, parochial pride. Uh, let me just acknowledge some people here from New York. Andy McCarthy, who has been such a staunch fighter for so many years. Barbara Winston, who is just a true patriot, and someone who is really part of a small minority, but he's here tonight and always on your directors. He's an actor, and he's conservative and represents true American values and principles, Tony Lobianco. So, Tony.
and you're going to hear from her uh, later. But let me just uh, pay a, a special debt of gratitude to uh, Deborah Burlingame, who, lo who lost her brother in 9-11 and has been a fierce, fierce advocate for 9-11 families. Deborah is not one of the 9-11 family members who is on the Rolodex of the New York Times or MSNBC, but she is someone who has always been there ever since September 11th as, again, a fierce, fierce advocate for the fight against terrorism, against Islamic terrorism, and I thank her for her work. Now, we are here tonight because we share a belief. We share a belief that our country should never apologize to anyone. We share a belief that our country is engaged <laughs> in a struggle, quite frankly, for survival. It's a battle of civilizations between us and Islamic terrorists. And as we go forward, there are many battlefields in this, but there is none that requires more suffering or more struggle than the men and women of our armed forces. And I want to thank them for all that they have done over the last 11 years to <laughs> to carry the fight to the enemy in faraway battlefields. And as we go forward, we face such a crisis, I believe, in our nation. We have an administration which does believe in apologizing to the enemy. We believe in, uh, we have a president who goes to Cairo to apologize for the American positions. We have a president who somehow equates Iran pursuing a nuclear weapon with Israeli settlements, a president who can find the time to meet with the presidents of Egypt, who can find the time to meet with rappers, but cannot find the time to meet with our closest ally in the Middle East, the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. So we are... And because of that, it's absolutely essential that we do all we can to get our message to the American people. What we saw in the last week, when we saw the President of Egypt, a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, who receives $1.6 billion in aid from the United States of America, refuse to defend the American Embassy against mobs. When we saw mobs in Egypt overtake the American Embassy, burn burn our flag, take the flag down, and fly an al-Qaeda flag over the American embassy, and that Muslim Brotherhood president continues to get $1.6 billion, and the next day, when the president of the United States goes out to talk about what happened the day before, never even mentions what happened in Egypt, never even mentions that the person that he is authorized to receive this aid, the president of the Muslim Brotherhood, a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, and also the president of Egypt, has refused to carry out the most basic obligation of a head of state and a head of government, and that's to protect foreign embassies in his country. It's an absolute disgrace what President Morsi did. It's also a disgrace the President of the United States refused to pu publicly call him on it. That is wrong. It should not be tolerated by the American people. And, and then we have Libya, we have Benghazi, the American consulate in Libya, where on September 11th, of all days, September 11th, we have the American consulate attacked. We have the American consulate attacked in Benghazi, an area where Al-Qaeda is extremely powerful, an area where Al-Qaeda in the Maghreb is extremely powerful, an area where Ansar al-Sharia, a Al-Qaeda offshoot, is extremely powerful, where a former Guantanamo detainee has a large leadership position. We have the American M uh, consulate attacked, we have four Americans killed, and we have this administration, the UN ambassador, the president's personal press secretary, saying it was not a terrorist attack. If, anyone sh if anything should show the American people how blind this administration is to reality, how much they're willing to apologize and turn away from reality, it's what happened in Libya. For them not to know this was a terrorist attack either shows they have no idea what's going on in the world 
or they're willing to sacrifice American security for the sake of getting through this election so the president can say that he defeated al-Qaeda. There is no al-Qaeda. It was just some pornographic film that set off a massive riot demonstration and attack which killed four Americans. In either event, it's inexcusable, it's disgraceful, and the American people should reject it out of hand, and the ambassador to the United Nations should resign for going on television shows spreading those lies and misrepresentations about what happened in Libya. We have to stay focused. We have to stay focused on who the enemy is. The, the enemy is not an amorphous group called terrorists or extremists or violent extremists. The enemy is Islamic terrorism. Islamic terrorism, which is dedicated to destroying our way of life and our civilization. If we don't identify the enemy, if we don't know who the enemy is, that enemy is going to end up defeating us. You cannot defeat an enemy unless you know who the enemy is, and the enemy is Islamic terrorism. And we have come a long way since September 11th. It was not easy. And I think it's important for us as conservatives, as Americans, never to forget those who really were out there on the front lines doing what they had to do and really took the hit for all of us. So let me just acknowledge a person tonight who's here, Scooter Libby, for what he did for his country during some of the toughest times. So as we go forward between now and the election and after, let us commit ourselves never to back down to the liberal media, never to back down to care, not to back down to the elite, to realize that our position is not always popular with the media, it's not always popular with those who try to form public opinion. But it is popular, if we just have the guts to say it, it's popular with the American people because the American people know that our survival is at stake. And they want us to step forward. They want us to go forward. Let's not be intimidated by MSNBC or the New York Times or any of the mainstream media or anyone who somehow tries to scare us off. We have an obligation as Americans, those of us in public life have a greater obligation than others, never ever to back down. This is a diabolical, evil enemy. But so long as we stand together as Americans, we cannot be defeated. We will, we will win. Victory will be ours and Islamic terrorism will be defeated. Thank you all and God bless you.